Welcome to Markitecture, where you can get smart fast with in-depth interviews of leading technology vendors. I'm Jeremy Kagan, and I'm here with Rand Fishkin, the CEO and founder of SparkToro. Rand has also been a great contributor to my classes on digital marketing at Cornell and Columbia, so I want to thank him for taking his time here today. Jeremy, great to be here. Let's dig into the product. So can sure. you tell me a little bit about SparkToro and what the product does generally and a couple specific use cases? Sure, sure. So first off, SparkToro is incredibly simple. It's just challenging to build it, I guess you'd say. So the way that we basically work is SparkToro goes out and collects data from the public web, primarily social profiles and also websites. So we might be like, oh, okay, here's, you know, Jeremy Kagan's, um, you know, here's your personal website. And that points to like your page on Columbia, it points to your page on C Cornell. And, you know, those point to your Twitter and your LinkedIn. And from your LinkedIn, we see that, you know, you point to your Facebook page that points to your LinkedIn. And we call all of these, you know, pages and social profiles, one, one profile in our index, right? That's one like entity, human being, organization. And then we discard all the personally identifiable information. So we don't want to know your name. We don't want your address. We don't want anything that could tie you to you. We're basically building a huge anonymized index of demographics and behaviors around these profiles. So we could say, oh, you know, I want to search for whatever technology professors in the United States. And I would like to know information about technology professors. And we could say, well, it turns out that, you know, they're 61% women and, you know, 30% men and 9% non-binary. And we know that they frequently use these four hashtags in this general order when they post on their social accounts. And we know that they follow these entities and watch these YouTube channels and they listen to these podcasts. And before SparkToro, if you wanted to say, hey, I'm really interested in whatever, technology professors in the U.S. or chemical engineers in the United Kingdom, or I want to know what people who talk about the game Dungeons and Dragons online are, are paying attention to. You'd kind of have to run like big market research surveys maybe, or buy very expensive, you know, large data sets and try to filter through that. It was a royal pain. And SparkToro essentially solves quite a simple problem, which is I want to know the behaviors and demographics of a particular audience. And we, we call this field audience research, so slightly different from market research. And there's an infinite number of use cases, right? Basically, whenever, whenever someone in product or marketing or sales or strategy, even investors, economic boards of trade, uh, the, the Board of Trade of New Zealand is a is one of our biggest customers. They they like use SparkToro all the time to help a whole bunch of organizations in New Zealand that are targeting the US and Canadian markets. And there's fascinating use case. One of my favorite use cases that I love to talk about was a, I, I can't reveal the television show, but there was a popular television show, particularly popular with GLBTQIA type of audiences. And this show had been canceled by a network that was previously running it, and it got picked up by one of the other streaming services. And the pitch to the streaming service used SparkToro data to basically show who the audience was for this, this show and the fact that this audience was one that they had not yet captured with their other programming. And so it was, you know, it was kind of like a, hey, if you want to bring this audience to your streaming service, you know, here's a million people who are passionate about this show and here's all their behaviors and demographic data. And, you know, you might want to pick up the show and they did. So I think, I think the show got renewed last year and production is starting now. Quite exciting. So would you say then if you're looking to do research on a particular audience, you're targeting for sales and marketing in particular, or to, uh, to highlight a product to, this is a great way to find the uh, profiles of those folks and sort of their influences and where they're hanging out online. Yes. To the last three things, no to the first one. Okay. Meaning, so SparkToro will never say, here's a list of um, whatever. If you're interested in, in technology professors in the U.S., here's a list of them. We will never show that. You know, your name won't be on a list. What we do is anonymize and aggregate the profiles that you search for. So if you said, I want to find people who, you know, are interested in Dungeons & Dragons, right? The, the, the tabletop game. <laughs> we would not show you a list of who those people are. 
but we would show you anonymized data about what they pay attention to, what they follow, what they do online, words and phrases they use, hashtags they use, podcasts they listen to, YouTube channels they subscribe to, social accounts that they follow. All of that data is what SparkToro shows you. It does not show you the actual profiles themselves. That's for two reasons. One is privacy. Technically, all of this is public data and we could conceivably legally show it, but it's not what we want to do. We don't we don't want to be a individual, you know, one to one sales finding and spamming tool. And also, we think that the aggregated and anonymized percentile information is way more interesting, right? Like it's way more interesting to know that you can reach 37 percent of all the people who talk about D&D online through you know, this particular website or this podcast or this YouTube channel than it is to say, oh, here's, you know, Mary in Spokane, Washington, and she talked about D&D a bunch in the last three months. So not really a specific lead finding or generating tool, more of a tool to help identify where your audience is for either content marketing or advertising or something like that. Yeah, exactly. So it, it can tell you things that you might do on the strategy side, product strategy, right? Should I be building for this type of audience or this type of audience? Is the audience familiar with these ter pieces of terminology or this kind of terminology? Do they talk about these things? Do they use these hashtags, right? And it's also useful for, hey, when I go to my social account and post my content pieces, maybe I should be using these hashtags. In fact, before I do that, maybe I should follow these hashtags to see what the general conversation, you know, vibe of the room, topics of the day are. Also very important if you're doing, you know, direct social media marketing. So which accounts should I be following and engaging with? Which ones should I try and get to amplify and promote my brand? Where is the, are the conversations taking place and, and what are those conversations? Also useful if you are doing brand marketing, right? Because you can, you can sort of compare and contrast your own brand's followers and, and sort of ecosystem and community versus your competitions. You can see what the differences are between them. You can see where you may be strong and weak. You can see where there's potentially publications and sources of influence that, you know, their audience is paying attention to that your audience is not. And that could be areas of opportunity. And then, yes, you know, content marketing is is probably one of the top three use cases. And the other big one is is PR, public relations. So folks who are going out and trying to find publications to pitch and podcasts to be a guest on and YouTube channels. And then the, yeah, the last one is advertising, right? Which is essentially, I'll just go into my Facebook ads and SparkToro tells me, oh, this is, this is a really good, you know, source of influence for my audience. Great. Let me just see if I can get their Facebook page as a targeting set in, in the audience that I'm creating. Thanks for listening. To hear the complete interview, subscribe at architecture.tv. 